chosen one, being a chosen one, about what it means when God has chosen you. I learned something interesting today. I thought, I was starting to worry that maybe the cross shaking but going back and forth was a structural issue with the church. People have been telling me that that is a lucky, a good luck charm, but that is a sign that God is with us. So this is a sign that we are God's chosen because we have this uh, swaying cross. I like that idea much better than structural problems, so uh, let's go with that. <laughs> but we're going to talk about what's the difference between a worldly chosen one and a godly chosen one. Something that God actually chose or somebody that we say is a chosen one. Because we generally get it wrong. That's our history. It is getting it wrong. Uh, our service begins with some uh, announcements. I want to highlight three things before I open it up to the crowd. Uh, the first are two that are in your, two handouts that are in your bulletin. Uh, we're looking for a new youth junior high high school director. Kelly is now working more hours in the office, which means she doesn't necessarily have the time to work with the youth. Uh, so we're looking for someone. If you know of someone uh, that's interested, uh, have them get in contact with me. Let me know. Uh, we're looking for people with a good sense of humor, and good with kids, and all that kind of thing. Go to the youth. Uh, good organizational skills is also a plus. And then the other thing in your bulletin is a bingo night. So there is not a raffle, but a drawing at this as well. Uh, but come for that. Come to have a, a little bit of fun. Well, a lot of fun. I'm not going to limit your fun. Uh, there's going to be a movie for kids and bingo and uh, door prizes and taco bar and a lot of a lot of good things. The money will help fundraise for the carnival so that we can hit the ground running with the carnival that we're doing next year. So that's the purpose of that, November 8th at 6 p.m. And then the other thing I want to highlight is the trunk or treat. This form is out there if you would like to have your trunk treated. Um, but also, if you have a kid, make sure that they're there. Uh, they can wear costumes. Oh, I'm up on the screen now. Uh, they can wear costumes, but they can also get a whole lot of candy. So have them come. All the trunks are preparing with uh, for 100 plus kids which you can, you know, if you are a parent of a kid, you can hope for bad turnout and just get a ton of candy. Um, or I guess it, maybe parents don't want their kids to have a lot of candy. Forget about that. There'll be too many kids will run out of candy, you won't have to worry about it. Uh, but if you'd like to be a part of that, it is Wednesday, October 30th. The trunk or treating starts at 6. If you would like to have your trunk treated, it's at 5.45, and these forms are out there. Also, please continue to fill out those uh, recommitment forms with your pledge card if you've not done so already. Uh, we are trying to get one from everyone, and the forms are out at the Welcome Center. All right, other announcements. Bruce, you want to? On November 3rd, two Sundays from now, um, Liberty will be here. I'm pretty sure almost all of you know who they are. Uh, bring your friends, and they'll be here at the 9.30 service only. So we can still have an 8 o'clock service, so you can go to 8 o'clock if you want, and then come to the concert at 9.30. And we're going to have the 11 o'clock service too, so you can come to the concert at 9.30, and then have your service at 11 if you want. But um, bring your friends. This is, this is a great group, and uh, they're going to be performing a concert for us at 9.30 on November 3rd. Thank you. Reformation Sunday, so wear red. Uh, I'll be wearing my red shoes, of course, but the rest of you can uh, wear your festive red for Reformation Sunday. And then the following Sunday is All Saints, where we'll have uh, 8, 8, and 11 will be the All Saints service, and then the 9.30 will be the Liberty Quartet. Any other announcements? Well, look at that. All right, please stand as you're able as we take part in our Thanksgiving for baptism. There's a rather terrifying passage in the Bible that says, many are called, but few are chosen. I tend to take that a step further and say only one was chosen, chosen, namely Jesus the Christ. The one that went before us, that died for us, the only one who's ever gotten him right, the only one who's ever lived perfectly, and these are his baptismal waters. The baptismal waters that you've taken part in, that you were marked with, 
These are your waters, but namely you are changed into Jesus the Christ walking around this world. You are a chosen one of God because of who you represent, the Spirit of God that is within you. That's why we celebrate baptism at the start of this service. Because you have been marked in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and that has changed you into a chosen one of God. Amen. Amen. Let us sing. <coughs> oh, that's right. We're supposed to be afraid of it. Yes. Forget about what I said. We worked on this, so we're going to do it. Go ahead and sit down real quick. We'll be an awkward transition. That's all I want.
chosen one. I'm the chosen one. I'm the smartest person on the planet. All the online IQ tests say I say so. I have 14 PhDs, 150 books. I'm a walking encyclopedia. Everyone comes to me for answers. I am the chosen one. If I say it's true, it must be true. So super smart person. All the online IQ tests say so. Is that? No? That's also? No, okay. All right. Chosen one number three. I am the chosen one, for I am the king of Nauru. Sure, it is one of the smallest countries, and you've never heard of it, but I am king, which makes me extremely powerful. People grovel at my feet. I am God's chosen one, because I am at the top of the heap. I am king. I am God's chosen. How about that one? No? But he's the king of Pleasant Island. Isn't that where they sound it? No, that's a weird place. All right, God's chosen number four. I am probably not the chosen one. I don't think much. My family isn't around much anymore. But I just do the best that I can. Help when I can. Give when I can. Love when I can. Share when I can. I try to live each day for today and do the most with what I have been given. But I am probably not the chosen one. How about them? Are they the chosen one? Why are they the chosen one? She's nicer, yeah. Much for the king. She's not bragging, that's definitely true. Right. Yeah, the, that was a good statement. She said the poor are the chosen one, not necessarily the rich people in it, because it's not about what you have, it's not about getting the most. 
It's not about accumulating most. It's about what you do with each moment that you're giving. So she helped out when she could. She loved when she could. And Beckett's talking when he can. So let's go ahead and pray, all right? Let us pray, let us pray, let us pray. Loving God. Loving God. We thank you. We thank you. For making us. For making us. Your chosen ones. Your chosen ones. We know. We know. That we won't. That we won't. Always. Always. Get it right. Get it right. Thank you. Thank you. For loving us. For loving us. Anyways. Anyways. As we continue, As we continue to, try, to try to be, to be your, chosen ones. your chosen ones. And all God's people said, Amen. I forgot to say repeat after me, but thank you for coming out. Good job. Just depend 
be it a story, something they're going through, my brain immediately connects it with the movie. I can't stop it. If someone says something to me, I'm like, hey, that's from like Terminator 2. Or this is from Avatar. I don't know why all my thoughts are James Cameron movies. Thankfully, I didn't say Titanic, but... <laughs> my brain works like this. And with my friends, too many times, we speak only in movie quotes. Are you talking to me? It's elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> it's a sickness that is within me. And the reason I bring this up, forgive me, is that I'm about to talk about Keanu Reeves. May God have mercy on my soul. <laughs> but when I think of a chosen one, when the world thinks of a chosen one, we think of someone like Keanu Reeves in the movie The Matrix. His character's name is Neo, which is, of course, a very deep name, which is an anagram for one, meaning the chosen one. They're not subtle in the movie The Matrix, is what I'm saying. Uh, you see, here's the plot to The Matrix, as summed up as shortly as I can. Computers have taken over the world, and they've trapped human beings in a giant computer program because they need human beings to be the batteries to power their electronics. It's as simple as I can make it. And Neo is the chosen one to break all of humanity out of this computer program that has enslaved humanity. He is the chosen one to do this. So Neo, of course, as movies happen, falls into a trap set up by a computer, which is represented by a man wearing a suit. If you've seen movies, you know that suit generally means bad. But Neo dies. Sorry to ruin that for you, but you had 20 years to see it. So. But of course, he comes back, just like Jesus, we're supposed to think. And when he comes back, instead of running away like any sane person would do, he stays. And through his gravity-defying, bullet-stopping, incredible strength, incredible speed, and the power of his mind, which is hard to line up with Keanu Reeves, but that's a part of the movie, <laughs> we realize, through this violent conflict, that he is the chosen one. The followers see that he is the chosen one. They know this because he is incredibly gifted, powerful, and strong. He is a true leader. A dominant force that can bend this world to his will. This is what we think of when we think of chosen ones in the world. When I say chosen one, probably a lot of you immediately think of someone like LeBron James, or a, a basketball, football, baseball star, or a movie star. But we get into trouble when we try to label the true chosen ones. The problem comes when we try to figure out who they are chosen by. We generally, without ever saying it, think that they are chosen by God. They were given such great abilities or skills that they clearly are shown to be the chosen one. And we immediately rush to the idea that people like Neil, who are pretty and fast and strong and rich and fearless, are obviously the chosen ones. But is it so? Before you say anything, before you say, I don't think like that, I want to ask one question. When do we call ourselves blessed? When do we say the phrase, I'm so very blessed? We don't say it necessarily when someone dies, or someone passes away, or we end a relationship, or we have to move back in with our parents because money's too tight. We might say we are so blessed then, but then we start laughing uncontrollably. We generally line up blessing, the world lines up blessing with getting things, achieving things. Michael Phelps is blessed, not the person who came in second. Or this person that has all these kids is blessed, not these people that struggle to have kids. We want to say who the chosen ones are, the ones blessed by God, but we get it wrong over and over and over again. The word chosen is thrown out a number of times in the Gospel of Luke. And probably the most interesting one is the last time it's used. In Luke chapter 23, we find our Lord and Savior on a cross. 
And the religious leaders look up at him and mock him by saying, here is God's chosen one. It's laughable to them to think that this would be God's chosen one. This suffering, broken, defeated individual is God's chosen one. Yet our complete religious history says these are who God's chosen ones are. Moses had a stuttering problem and died before he got to the promised land. Zechariah was stoned on the temple, on the temple steps. He was the chosen one. The apocryphal book Ascension of Isaiah tells us that the prophet Isaiah was sawn in half. This is before they had that magic trick. So he was literally sawn in half. Chosen one. John the Baptist, who was chosen to make the way of the Lord, was beheaded. And all the disciples, who were literally chosen by Jesus, literally chosen by God, what was their reward? Death. Before you want to call yourself a chosen one, you might want to really think what you're getting yourself into. Running through our world is a fancy bit of theology called prosperity gospel. And this is something that you're all very familiar with. You might just never know the name. It usually starts out with someone staring into a camera and saying, God wants you to be happy. God wants you to have all the material things that you need. And if you are faithful enough, if you believe enough, God will provide for you every single thing that you need. And because of preachers like this, this prosperity gospel, we have people believing that Christianity is tied to how full your wallet is. How much stuff and material gain you have. That if you don't have those things, if you are in need, you're somehow lacking in faith. You are somehow getting it wrong. This is part of Christianity. I hear about it every single day. The chosen of God become those with the most. We lift up the athletes, the stars, the movie stars, the music stars. And then we get upset when one of them does a little bit of twerking on stage at a music concert. And we wonder, how could the chosen ones do that? I'm going to be honest. I don't care what Miley Cyrus or Alan Thicke's son do. Unless they're going to make a growing pain remake, and then I'm all on that. <laughs> but Barry Bonds lets us down. Or Aaron Hernandez. Or Lauren Hill, or whoever's on your list. No, they're disappointing. But they weren't the chosen ones. They were never meant to be. That's prosperity gospel. And we are cross theologians, cross gospelers. We see things as they actually are. We know that in the midst of a truly terrible moment, a moment on the cross, in which Jesus was broken, defeated, hurt, God's chosen one was there. Even in the midst of all that. Even in the midst of all that was wrong. We know that there is still glory there. God is still present there. We are cross theologians, not because we want to lift up the power of suffering and say you should go home and whip yourselves. No, that's not what I'm saying. If you just tune back in, no. <laughs> we are cross theologians because we realize that the glory of this world is short sighted, and that the chosen ones of God never connect to the worldly chosen. Which brings us to our widow for today. The chosen one in our text for today. When talking about this widow, Jesus says, And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? This widow is a chosen one. That would have been flat out shocking to the people of the day. I want to give a brief note about the widows. A few weeks back, we talked about what life was like for women back at the time of Jesus. How they were property. And how a divorced woman was basically the broken computer of the day, thrown into the junk heap of life. Cast aside. Do you think it was better for widows? No. When their husband died, if the children didn't take care of them, they were out. They were on their own. They had to look after themselves. Yet here we have someone lifting them up. 
Luke's Gospel has five widows that are mentioned in no other Gospel. Five widows that are lifted up in a time when ink was so very expensive. Luke's Gospel features the near penniless widow who gives away that last penny. The widow Anna, who in her poverty, still manages to spread the word of Jesus Christ. The widow of Zarephath, who fed Elijah with the last of her food during a famine. The widow of Nain, who lost her son only to see Jesus bring him back. And our widow for today. In that day and age, you wouldn't squander paper, ink, on something as foolish as this. They couldn't be the chosen ones. They had nothing. What are Luke? What is Jesus doing? <coughs> Here's the shocking truth of Christianity. How the world views you is of zero importance. What you have in this world is of zero importance. What you did yesterday is of zero importance. What do you have left after that? Everything. I was watching the TV recently when an advertisement came on featuring Derek Rose the basketball star, the chosen one of Chicago basketball. And he was trying to sell me shoes, of course. And I'll admit, the ad had me. I'm a bit of a sucker for advertisement. If I watch an ad on Taco Bell, you can guess what I'm going to be eating later. I'm that kind of sucker. So I started thinking maybe I need some new shoes. Hear the words from this epic opus of propaganda. It begins, let me tell you something. If you took away the money, if you took away the fame, the spotlight, if you took away the lifestyle and all the things that come with it, if you took away all the flash, what would you have left? And his voiceover finishes everything. And I thought, well done, Adidas. Perhaps I will buy one of your shoes. Perhaps a pair of them. <laughs> but then it ends with this big splashy hashtag, this big splashy title that I have to believe was against the wishes of the chosen one of Chicago basketball. I can't see him approving it. It said, hashtag, basketball is everything. And you lost me at that last bit. I thought, Adidas, you were so close to getting it right. You were so close to selling me a pair of shoes I don't want or need. But Christianity is about freeing you from the games we play. The ways we get trapped in yesterday and tomorrow. Remember that thing you did 15 years ago that you still can't let go? That's keeping you trapped in the past. Remember that future that you're always planning for that will never actually get here? That's keeping you trapped in the future. We want you in the present. That's where the chosen ones of God live. The chosen ones of God give away their last penny today because today needs it. They give away their last bit of food today because today needs it. They demand justice today and today and today because we know most certainly that today needs it. Today makes a chosen one. Not yesterday and certainly not tomorrow. <coughs> Forget what you did 10 years ago. It doesn't matter. You tried to call your senator and nothing happened, try again. You took care of your neighbor when they were down and put them up in a hotel and they ended up taking advantage of you. Try again. You went to a church, this church or any church, and got burned. Try again. Is it safe? No. Is it smart? Absolutely not. Look at the chosen ones of God. Stone. Saw. Hang. Most don't want to be the chosen ones in Christianity because it's too darn impractical, too darn hard, too darn trying. But we have to try. Fail in that moment, try again. Fail in that next moment, try again. Try and try and try because in doing so, you become God's chosen. You become God's chosen in a moment, for a moment. Each moment is a new opportunity to do that, to lift up what God's chosenness really means. To push past those things that the world says are good gifts. And to pass forward to the foolishness of God's chosen. 
Does this person deserve it? No. Try with them. Is this person a jerk? Yes. Try with them. I hope you didn't think I was pointing at anybody over there. <laughs> Keep trying and trying and trying. Christianity isn't a religion about getting it right. It's why forgiveness is so free. So you can try again and again and again. Jesus on the cross and Luke through the widows turned this world upside down. And we have been chosen to continue the flip. Amen. Please stand as you're able to sit. things in this world. Partisan divides, countries at war, escalating tensions. Help us to find ways to peace. 
Help us to find ways to make our air clean, our water fit to drink. Help us to be a people of creation, good stewards of creation. We know that all you have made is good. We're going to need your help getting back to it. Lord, in your mercy. In your prayers. Loving God, we pray for those who are hurting in body, mind, or soul. We pray that you would heal them, that you would make them whole. We offer those names to you now, either silently or aloud. Lift them up into your loving arms, O oh God, and let them know that they are never alone. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remembering Jesus' life, his death, and his promise to come again, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. <clears throat> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.